that detail on you about the only thing you can bank on is knowing that you're going to hear something new, original, and super fantastic. Your community and college radio station, 96.7 FM, Sudbury. I want to welcome everyone back to the Learning Clinic on CKLU 96.7 FM. I'm your host, Bob Kerwin, and as I mentioned, this afternoon we have Jeff McIntyre in the studio. Jeff is going to be talking to us about downtown Sudbury and, and a whole bunch of other things that are, uh, I guess, uh, generating a lot of interest in uh, the community during the election year. Jeff, yeah. welcome to CKLU. Oh, thanks for having me. It's, um, it, it's rushed. We just brought him in, sat him down, and, and here we go. <laughs> um, Jeff, um, the, the downtown core of yeah. Sudbury, and, and I mean, when you go to the, the downtown Sudbury website, it's, it's amazing. It's got, like, it's, it's a very well-developed site. You're the chair of the board, or the yeah. chair of the committee? Chair of the board. Okay. Could, can you tell us what downtown Sudbury is all about? Because there are some myths. I, I know I live in the Valley and, yeah. and, and in Ward 5 and, and, and it just seems like all you're hearing about is downtown suburb. but I think some people will get the misconception that it's the city council that's yeah. promoting downtown suburb, but it's not really that way, is it? No. Downtown suburb is actually it's a BIA, which is a business improvement uh, association. And it's that, not the only one in, in Sudbury? Right? There's two in Sudbury. Uh, it's actually a mandate of the provincial government okay. that uh, made BIAs possible. And it started in, I think, York Street, Toronto. And what happened was a bunch of members got together and said, we want our area to look a little nicer than it does currently. Okay. So can we get some kind of mechanism where we can group together uh, and fund it ourselves to make our area nicer? <laughs> the Ontario government thought it was a great idea. And put in a process where the BIAs can have a levy so we can charge our members a certain amount to be in that area. Okay. So the municipality collects that money for us, distributes it back to the BIA, and then we have money to improve our street lights, put on festivals, uh, better signage, planters, all of those kind of nice things that you hear happening downtown. Mm -hmm. It's actually paid for by the members of the BIA. So, so I think that that's a, probably one of the biggest misconceptions is that, that a lot of the people feel that it's their tax dollars yeah. that are, are paying for the development of downtown, but it's not, is it? Well, I should there, there's it's some tax it's dollars that are going to go towards it. It's it. like anywhere else. Yeah, but if you look at prior amalgamation, mm -hmm. streetlights, for example, we were paying a 30% premium to get slightly nicer streetlights. Okay. Now we pay 50 Okay. So, you know, so we you can have the standard or you can pay extra. Yeah. So we're actually paying more since amalgamation. Okay. So, so tell us about the group. It, it's a, it's a pretty expensive group, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's absolutely every taxpayer downtown, uh, within the boundaries of Paris street, the tracks and St. Anne's road. Okay. And that's uh, from your website. It's like 90 property owners and yeah, Something and like over 400 businesses. Yeah, which has grown slightly since I think that number. We've had a lot of businesses move downtown in the last little while. Okay, and and, and uh, the businesses that set up in downtown, that, that's one of the the requirements. They they can't opt out of this. Can no, they? when you uh, form a BIA, you need 70 percent approval to form it, and then we decide a levy. So this year, I think it was about 450 thousand was the total levy. So all of those property owners pay into that levy as part of their municipal taxes. So it's above and beyond what you would generally pay for your municipal taxes. You pay into this BIA levy. Okay. It's almost like a uh, a business organization, or it's it's not quite like a chamber of commerce because you're you're I guess you're you're more into a marketing role, right? We do a lot of marketing. We do a lot of events. Uh, we advocate quite a bit. So one of the reasons you see downtown mm -hmm. in the newspaper more than other areas is uh, there's a group that is defined that does that. Okay. The the uh, despite the fact that, that there is a downtown Sudbury organization mm -hmm. and, and, and you've got the BIA, there there always there seems to be this this push for a 
strong downtown. And mm -hmm. it's not just uh, a marketing promotion by the yeah. downtown suburb group. It, there's a, I guess there's, there's a, a feeling out there that in any city, your downtown core should be kind of mm -hmm. special. Um, can, can you give us some of your thoughts yeah. on that? There's, chair, I'm sure you have yeah. some thoughts. So there's a few reasons for that. Um, one, a strong downtown is just great economic sense. Uh, the infrastructure cost, the uh, service cost, all of that is much lower in downtown because of the density of it. So a strong downtown generates more money than it takes. So if you have a strong downtown, you're helping to pay for busing, roads, policing, and the rest of the community. Um, the second reason for it is, uh, when people come to your city, more often than not a tourist will come to your downtown first. This day and age, the reason for it is, if you go to a mall, you're going to the same mall in the community that you're from. They have the same stores, same line of clothing, same everything. You come to downtown Sudbury right now, you go to one of the restaurants, you're getting unique food that you'll get nowhere else in the province, because it's a local restaurant, the only place doing it. You go to Artisan Elgin, same thing. You're not going to get those products anywhere else in the world, right? It's a, a local artist doing that kind of stuff. And that's really become what downtowns are. Uh, they become really strong on, on the local piece and on the uniqueness factor. Now on top of that, we've seen a lot of white collar move downtown. And a lot of that white collar wanted to move downtown because their employees demanded it. They said, we want to go out for lunch. We want good selection. We want to be able to walk to lunch. We want to be able to do these kind of things. So we've seen a lot of businesses look at the downtown and make a decision whether they're going to locate in Sudbury or not. If you have a strong downtown, that white collar workforce that's tied to everything from mining, mining supply, uh, financial, one of the, the ways they decide where they're going to move is what the strengths of that downtown core is and how likely they're going to be able to get the best and brightest to move to that city. Uh, if you're a top end employee, you have the choice to work anywhere in the country. Um, no employer is going to tell you you have to work here because you can work remotely fairly easy at this point. And if you're that top level, you need a city that can attract those people. Without a strong downtown, you're not attracting those people. And I guess when you take a look at the strong downtown, it's, it's generally the outlying areas that, I guess, paint uh, the complete picture of mm -hmm. the suburb area. So, yeah. so you can't... So I guess you're not looking at the downtown as, a, as a, an island. You're looking at it almost like a, a heart that leads out to the rest of the community of communities that create suburbs. Well, exactly, right? And, and I think a strong downtown in Cape Hill and a strong downtown in the Valley, um, you know, those are different. We all need to recognize that downtown is not the retail hub of any city anymore. It's just not true. You even go to Toronto and you know, it's the suburbs that have the big malls. Yeah. Downtown Toronto is a lot of unique places and it's got one Eaton Center. And even there, that's hollowed out a fair bit in the last little while. Yeah, yeah. Sears, Sears is really uh, taking a chunk out of that property. Mid-end retailers everywhere are, you know, having a hard time. So, you know, you're getting these kind of top-end local stores that are doing fairly well these days, and you're getting the Walmarts, Targets, uh, big box, uh, heavy discount retailers and that mid-size is getting hollowed out significantly. The, um, the, the whole year-long schedule like for downtown Sudbury, you, you've announced a rebranding campaign, I think mm -hmm. it was uh, around the end of February, right? Yeah. And, and can you give us a little bit of background on what this rebranding is all about? I, the word branding seemed to get a sour note when uh, we got into branding yeah. <laughs> Sudbury, but, but I think rebranding downtown, um, give us a little bit of background on what, what it is that you're trying to... So our old brand was Live Workshop. And, live well, Workshop. Live Workshop downtown. And uh, the problem with it was that it wasn't really telling the story. Um, you know, the shop was a big emphasis on it, and shopping just isn't, isn't the strength in downtowns that it used to be. Um, it's really more about a lifestyle and about uh, niche retail and hospitality. So it was really a lot more of the live kind of piece of it. And uh, the live didn't really tell the story correctly. So we needed a brand that was better at communicating 
the message of what a downtown is today. So we've gone with this downtown as a place for you. And a big piece of it is this push pin that's the new logo. And we're going to be identifying different sectors through different colors of push pin throughout the downtown. So that when you come, a specific color will identify uh, hospitality, specific color will identify kind of high-end uh, retail, and we'll be able to tell that story and point to the successes that downtown has by saying, look at the 70 restaurants that we have downtown that are absolutely unique, that are owner-operated, uh, phenomenal chefs can put together you know, menus and chef's tables and do stuff that's unique that you can't experience at any chain across the city. Interesting. And, and the, I guess the, the, the direction for this rebranding is done through your, your staff, like Maureen Luong has been uh, yeah. around for a long time. Several, several years, several yeah. Several years, yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, do you have a, a very big staff that... Uh, we've got a staff of three now. Uh, we just brought in, we were two for quite some time. We just brought somebody in new uh, that's doing more of the marketing end of it. Uh, marketing's changed drastically in the last mm -hmm. 10 years. Yes. Um, it used to be that you paid for your distribution of materials and then they do the content for you. Now distribution's become fairly cheap. It costs to get uh, content made. Right. So now we have somebody that can go into the different venues downtown, find out what's going on, write a little piece, put that online, so that people have an idea of what's happening downtown. And we can distribute that through Facebook, Twitter, and uh, the traditional media. You're, you're finding more of that is, uh, more of the, the social media and the online, the website. Yeah. That's the distribution method being used in most cases now? Well, for sure, right? Um, you can get a message out fairly quickly through social media, and you can control the message fairly easily, so it's nice be able to have that ability for us to be able to tell our story. And it's up to date. It's always up to date. Yeah. You don't have to wait until the next production to get the new information out. It's exactly. You can correct it right away. Yeah. I, and, and we're noticing that. We have uh, we have a nice core in, in the Valley, for example, we have a nice uh, Facebook site now with over 1,460 members. And mm -hmm. what I'm finding is a lot of those members may not even live in yeah. summer anymore, but what's happening is they're getting messages that they're then sharing and forwarding to people who actually live here. Yeah. So it's not necessarily that it's only the people that are getting your message through your Twitter and your Facebook. Yeah. It's all their friends are potential. Yeah. Uh, well, delivery. Yeah. I, I can't remember the exact number, but we're in the thousands of uh, people on our page. But then you look at the analytics of it, and you're into hundreds of thousands of people one, seeing those stories. One click, and you're into the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, it's so that so this this is good because one of the things that I'm looking at is what can what can the downtown Belcaron, downtown Cape Rail, and downtown uh, Rayside Belt, what can they learn about what your group did to get together? Because I imagine you don't need as big a staff driving this when everybody is bought into it because they're part of the business improvement yeah. area. Well, Capriol uh, just recently started a business association. They're not uh, formalized under the BIA agreement through the province, okay. um, but I, I think they might be on that path kind of long run. Um, ju just forming an association on its own uh, gives you the ability to have a common voice, presenting ideas, um, and you know, forwarding what you want to do. Um, a lot of what we do is we leverage our funds, right? So we, we pool this money together, and then we say, okay, well, streetlights are getting replaced on this road anyways. What can we do to upgrade them, right? So let's right. go to the city and say, you're gonna spend you know, 400, 500,000 on replacing these streetlights. Well, if we kick in two to four, you know, can we get these specific ones instead and uh, you know, make it look a little bit nicer. Or you know, you're putting in these planters. Can we upgrade them slightly, and we'll help uh, fund part of that uh, street signage? We paid for specific street signage that went with our branding a few years ago. All of those kinds of things, right? That that define the area, so that when people are coming, they can see it and put it together. Uh, you know, a straight-on business association can easily go around to the members of the business association and say. You know, can you kick in a few hundred dollars? We're going to do this event. 
uh, to draw some attention. Um, and then being able to brand yourself. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I personally feel that a lot of the outline areas are making is constantly making the argument that we're downtown. There's a, a marketing confusion with that, right? If you're trying to market yourself, um, you know, I look at, uh, at Toronto, they have, I think, 1,200 different BIAs in Toronto, and only one of them calls themselves downtown. The rest of them have come up with very unique names that go with the area that they're in, I see. so that then they can promote themselves easier. Right? If you're going to do a special event in Capriol, and you want to say downtown Capriol, that's fine, but if you want to call it the shops on a specific street, or uh, you know this specific area, or the railway uh, center of the community, those kind of things, well, you're going to go further to identifying that area and um, being able to promote it in a strong way. So you promote the entire community? Well, you can promote the entire community and you can promote a section of the community. Um, you know, you can promote sort of the core of the valley and come up with, you know, a unique name or a unique branding for it. And whether that's downtown valley or, you know, whatever, but you want to tie that together and have a strong message around it so that whenever you're promoting an event, people know exactly where it is, they know all the places that are associated with it, and they can, uh, you can make that strong connection. So when that event's not happening, people still identify that as a unique area of the city and somewhere to go. I, this, is good. this is more educational, it's almost like a, a BIA 101 here. <laughs> uh, so, so if we're taking a look, for example, at, we're taking a look at Ward 5, Mm -hmm. My word. So, we're going to take a look at Ward Five. There's a business area in Valcarin, mm -hmm. and obviously there's a pretty extensive business area along Notre Dame. Yep. In in Ward Five. Mm -hmm. So, if you were going to establish a business improvement area, it's more geographical than it is ward based, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I imagine, uh, do you have more than one ward in the downtown, I, in your area? Um, I think so. Right? Sort of have three. Oh, three, yeah, connected. Yeah, like we've got two that are specifically in the BIA, but then uh, I guess Ward 11 just kind of runs the edge of it, so. Okay. So, so, it's, uh, so it becomes more of a, a geographical area that encompasses where the businesses are as yeah. opposed to the political division. Yeah, you, you want your, your business association to have that arm's length from, from the city. You're going to want to have a strong uh, communication with the city, but I'd say 80 to 90 percent of the time we're dealing with the bureaucrats of the city and not the politicians. Right. Um, you know, we're working on very specific projects, and by the time it gets to the politicians' hands, uh, it's already a fairly defined project because it's our members that put it together. And we went to the city staff and asked what was possible, what what can we do under the current rules instead of trying to get something new and special done. And then on occasion where it makes sense and where you know we, we really think the city should be uh, pulling their weight or, or adding value, uh, that's when we'll talk to the politicians and say, you know, uh, this project has worked in other communities, uh, it really needs some funding, this isn't within the scope of what the city does currently. But you might really want to take a look at this because it's in the city's best interest. It's not just downtown. And especially with the additional money that you're going to put into some of these uh, upgrades. Yeah. Uh, it, you're basically covering some of the costs for the city. Well, <laughs> well to a certain extent, on some things, like the, the street signage, we actually went out and full-on paid for street signage, some of it which the city already had to replace. So we saved the city money. Interesting. Yeah. So... When you when you're you know, take a look at, at trying to create this this is it a private not for profit that you're operating or is a it, it it is sort of it's um it's actually a very specific thing through the Ontario government so there's different rules that you have to play by uh, you, our organization can't own property uh, our organization has different kind of rules where we can't step on certain toes of the city. Uh, we can't step on certain toes of the private sector. Uh, we're there to improve the area, and we're there to represent our members. So, you know, th there's definitely rules around what we can and can't do. 
but uh, there's more than enough flexibility to, to make an area better. You have a member of council on your board? Uh, yeah, we have Fabio Belli right now. Okay. Is that something that you wanted to do, or, or it is. It, is it mandated? Um, I can't remember if it's mandated. I know it's something that most BIAs do do, and uh, and it, it's something that we've Makes always sense. asked for. It, having that connection to council is important. Uh, somebody on council needs to know what's going on around our table, so if the question comes up, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much every new council that sits looks at the, uh, the, the budget that comes in, they see the money that goes to the BIA, and they think that it's their money <laughs> and want to pull it back. And then we have to explain to them, no, we're actually legally allowed to ask for that money, and it, you never had any right to it. <laughs> so I, I, it's how I've been living in Sudbury all my life, and you're telling me a lot of things today that I wasn't aware of. And I guess, yeah. I guess when, when, when the, the general public is looking at city crews replacing lights and putting in signs, and they're looking and saying, well, those signs look an awful lot better than the ones we have in our town. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that the difference between the signs we have in the rest of the city yeah. and the signs that are going in your one area might be because you're putting in the extra money to upgrade. Yeah. And that's an important message for oh, people to know. Absolutely. And, you know, I only started on the BIA uh, three or four years ago, and that's one of the messages that we're trying to get across stronger because. You know, it's definitely one of the reasons that there's been some uh, friction at the table was, you know, the city of Malagavate and the outlying areas never had any reason to, to look at what happened downtown or what money was being spent downtown. And uh, there was a lot of costs associated with amalgamation that cost the entire city. Uh, you know, we're, we're all paying more. In a lot of ways, there was things that were done in the outlying areas that were volunteer work or that were, you know, a, a small contractor that had a, a special arrangement with the city. And when the city amalgamated, for better or worse, the city had to take it over. Uh, they didn't really have a lot of choice on it. And uh, that upped the cost to everybody. And, you know, we're seeing it downtown where the BIA is shouldering a higher percentage of the cost than we've ever shouldered for uh, a lot of the projects that we do in the core. So, so if, let, me, let me see if I've got this straight then. This means that if, um, if an organization, let's say a Valcaran, wanted to form their own BIA, mm -hmm. then they need 70% of the... Geographic area they decide. Okay, they set, yeah. set that area and then they need 70% of the registered businesses in that area to... The property owners. The property owners. Well, the property owners. Okay. Yeah. 70, uh, uh, just the business property owners. Um, yeah, you can define it that way. You, you can go 70% of the property owners, 70% of the business property owners, and then you define it, define the geography based on that. So it's almost like a referendum. Uh, yeah. yeah, you have to have a vote to, to do it. Is, is that how it's done though, through a referendum during an election? Or can you have a no, you can do it separately, and the, the, the costs aren't massively high because you're only, you only have, probably in Val Karen, maybe, 30, 40 business owners in an area that you'd want to create a BIA around, or property owners in that area. So you'd have to pull them together and, you know, uh, the city can arrange voting for it. Uh, they do that for several organizations. We have an election uh, every four years. It's immediately following council's election for our board. Okay. So we're an elected board through our members, and the city manages the election for us. So if you've got a property owner of a mall mm -hmm. that is not a local person, then that property owner is one vote, and all of the tenants would become part of yeah that one unit. They would pay through the pro the property owner, or would they pay into the? So they would pay through the property owner. You would, okay. You're taxed exactly the same as you would be through your municipal taxes. All right. What happens is, so we decide our levy every year. Our members then vote to ratify that levy. So they say, you know, we present it at our AGM, our members come in, they vote, approve it, and at that point we hand that off to the city and the city collects it as part of their tax collection. And then they forward us our piece. It would be interesting to get uh, 
some people who are part of the the founding group to talk about how well, Marie how Maloma, difficult it was to get all of that done. Yeah, Marie Maloma was actually uh, the executive director of when it was formed. Oh, really? So okay. that was several years ago. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was yeah, in the seventies, wasn't it? Seventy seven, nineteen seventy seven. I can I can see where this would be a a fairly lengthy process to to educate the yeah. property owners and especially especially property owners of malls where <laughs> now you're basically looking at convincing your tenants to have to pay more <laughs> than another mall down the street <laughs> just because yeah. of this extra levy. It's Most malls do not tend to vote to go into a BIA. Uh, pretty much just for the reason that they've got their own <laughs> that they are they are, you know, their own business association. So they want to do their own promotion and do their own type of thing. Um, and you know that's why a lot of malls aren't really downtown cores, right? They're right. A, a downtown core in this day and age isn't necessarily retail anymore. It, it's an amalgamation of businesses that make an area unique. And most malls, uh, some do, some, some have very unique businesses, but most malls don't necessarily have that type of uniqueness. You know, strip malls might be a little bit more likely to, to want to get involved but when you have that interior uh, condensed area with a, a nice big parking lot and, and inside walking. They don't necessarily want to share with other areas, right? You want your food court to do well, you want your businesses inside to do well. So you want to be self-contained. Uh, that's just the business strategy of, of most malls, um, where you have areas that are more pedestrian friendly and people want to walk back and forth. You need to find ways to, to co-brand and, and work together. No, it, it's, it's definitely, and you can see why mm -hmm. uh, an area like the downtown core of Sudbury would, would develop the business improvement area. Mm -hmm a lot easier than an outlying area because you, in most of these areas where you take a look, uh, like, like I'm looking at Chelmsford and I'm looking at the Valley, you do have major malls that are owned by a, a landlord yeah. that rents out the space. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be, it would be an interesting uh, challenge to try and get that 70% vote mm -hmm. to uh, to set up the BIA, but once you got that vote, everybody's part of it. Yeah. So even if you voted not to be in, if you vote, voted no, then you're, you're still in. So you're still in because you're going to benefit from overall marketing and, yeah. and promotion. That's great. Uh, the, the events that you uh, that you run in downtown Sudbury, mm. uh, as as you were saying, a, a lot of what you do in downtown Sudbury benefits the entire community because it's it it, it definitely creates a flavor, creates a, an atmosphere, yeah. and obviously then brings people into the downtown. So, yeah. so there's a marketing element as well. Yeah. The more events you can have, mm -hmm. the more it seems like it's going on in Sudbury, and then the more the, the people get to visit the downtown. Exactly. I guess that's something that all of the businesses buy into, and, and they really don't mind so many of these events going on downtown. It's <laughs> yes and no. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you do. Some people are going to be happy with certain things, unhappy with others. Yeah, uh, I found that out, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you ask 100 people, you're never going to get 100, 100 likes on the same idea. And, uh, you know, we, we always try and run our events at this point to benefit the majority of downtown. And we're really trying from this point on to uh, develop events that integrate as many of our members as possible into the event uh, so that you know there's that benefit and that education for people to come downtown that you know we're we have these high quality restaurants we have these high quality places to go uh, one of our members started their own event last year the Elgin Street Beer Festival uh, that was the Laffy Buddha townhouse group that did that uh, huge response. And, and that's fine with, with your organization? It's absolutely fine with our organization. And we're getting more into the, uh, we'll sponsor an event, right? If you want to put together the pieces, we'll help you with street closures and all of the expertise that we've garnered over the last 30, uh, 36 years that downtown's existed, or the downtown BI has existed. We've got enormous experience in, in putting on events. You know, we want to make downtown the easiest place in the city to put on events for any of our members. So, 
the, um, I guess the city staff must cooperate quite readily because of the history that you you had, right? Sometimes, oh, yeah. Right. You, you know, know it, it's, it's like, like hard to close streets or anything like that. It's, um, th there's always logistics to it. Being downtown, uh, you know, there's fire that runs straight through the downtown.